Welcome back to the National Defense. It's Randy Miller. You know, it's not a bad day when you got a Navy SEAL and a Green Beret on the phone with you. That's our situation right now, and I cannot wait to tell you and unpack this story. This is crazy. First of all, John Doolittle, former Navy SEAL and now Global Chief Revenue Officer of Katsu. Uh, John, how are you? I'm good, Randy. It's great to be on the show with you, man. Before we introduce Joe... I want you to tell yeah. me about Katsu because Katsu is in, kind of in the center of all of this. Yeah, no problem. Um, you know, I, I got introduced to Katsu when I was, I, I spent uh, 25 years in the Kings and, and my, the end of my career, I was at the headquarters in Tampa. So special operations headquarters in uh, Tampa, Florida. And I was having some uh, shoulder issues, and I needed uh, two surgeries done. And the PTs did my rehab using Katsu. And that's when I got first got introduced to it, and uh, I fell in love with it. It's a pretty simple concept. You put these pneumatic elastic bands on, and they're connected to a device that automatically puts a little pressure in. And uh, it makes it harder to do rehab movements than it would normally be. So if you're uh, using a resistance band that usually would just be like two or three pounds wearing katsu, it feels like it's 15, 20, 30 pounds, wow. depending on what pressure you're at, which helps a lot with rehab. That's why the PTs uh, like it. Yeah, and you know, I'm wondering if uh, we had Alex Smith, uh, Washington quarterback on the show, and everybody familiar the NFL comeback player of the year and you know he yeah. went to a military facility uh the intrepid to come back i wonder if he used some of the the katsu there yeah he's used he's used katsu before uh he used it on his throwing arm when he was practicing doing stuff in the past yeah he's he's a fan <laughs> well and listen nothing demonstrates this better than sergeant first class joe lowry and and this guy uh, unbelievable. Uh, Green Beret, Purple Heart recipient. Let me tell you about Joe. He was an ice hockey goalie. He graduated from Long Beach Wilson High School in Southern California. Extremely fit. He enlisted in the U.S. Army as an infantryman during his senior year in high school in response to 9-11. He attended basic training at Fort Benning, spent six years serving in different locations until he became a staff sergeant, qualified for the Special Forces Assessment and Selection Process. He completed his uh, basic training at Fort Benning, Special Forces training at Fort Bragg, and he earned his Green Beret and was signed to the, uh, the 7th Special Forces Group. He was deployed twice to Colombia and Afghanistan, Columbia. where he was wound, wounded by a PKM machine gun round during an intense firefight against Taliban insurgents July 7, 2014. A bullet pierced his Kevlar helmet, entered his skull, exited his brain on the other side. His fellow Green Berets rescued him. We were told that Joe would not live, wouldn't live long at all. As part of his brain was removed. Joe was in a coma for a month, then began his recovery initially at Walter Reed, got involved with Katsu. I, I, I'm going to let Joe himself take it from here. Joe, it is a privilege to have you on the National Defense, man. So honored to meet you. Thank you, Randy. And I will add to that. I didn't want to jump on your toes there, but I was given 11% chance of surviving when I was initially injured. And that's actually going to be the title of my book I'm writing. And that, you know, it's just a profound circumstances to overcome that, you know, I'm blessed by God in that way. But I'll add to it also, which we'll tie into it later, is that I have an abnormally thick skull. So do, so do I. <laughs> my wife, club, man. She got me with that right when I came out of my month long coma. She's like, now I got proof that you're hard headed. I was like, well, so th- from being a widow of four with four. Joe, Joe, tell me, uh, tell me about coming out of that coma. What, what was the, the, the first kind of situations you were aware of? Well, to bring you back, Randy, do you remember us going back? It was 2015. We were going through the whole, um, not, it wasn't coronavirus, but the other epidemic. So bizarre because I came out and I had, I actually emerged a month later. I was in a coma for a month and uh, came out of the coma at Palo Alto VA Rehab Center up in Northern California. Very good rehab for polytrauma is what they call it. And I came out without the ability to speak. I had a trach is what saved my life. 
my medic performed a battlefield trach on me. I mean, he tells me the story because from my perspective, it was lights out as soon as that right. P cam round hit my helmet. And then Randy, I just, well, he, 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 Joe's got this crazy picture of his seventh special forces group, his out, uh, his ODA team surrounding his table after he was shot. And the priest has given him his last right. Oh, wow. they were, yeah. It's crazy. They were all saying goodbye to him. Yeah. It's pretty profound. Yet he's stuck with it, man. Cause he's hard headed. <laughs> <laughs> so you come out of this coma, Joe, and are, are, are you once once you were able to kind of ascertain where you are and 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 somebody tells you what happened to you, uh, what's your frame uh, of mind? I mean, what, what are you what are you thinking? You know, it's so confusing. And the only thing now I can relate to it is when I've had a seizure since then. It's just like a blur. You just the brain just shuts down. I mean, it's like when you go to sleep at night and you wake up and you have no idea about the time elapsed. That's all I can really relate it to. It's so confusing. And like I said, there was a whole epidemic going on, and it was very confusing to me. And I'm like, I wasn't in Africa. How the hell did I get whatever it was that was going on? Oh, you had the virus. No, I, I didn't. And that it just I was confused because of the confusion Gotcha. that comes with it. I was like, what the hell? I wasn't even in Africa. How did I get? Yeah, it was the Z- Zika virus, right, Joe? Something like that. It was one yeah, of those. Yeah. John, I don't know about you, but if I wake up from a coma and they tell me a bullet was in my head and I got all this, you know, years of rehab, I'm, I might say, put me back into the coma. I mean, this, this guy, you talk about a fighter, Joe Lowry, Sergeant first class. This guy is had not only wanted to live and wanted to get through this, but Joe, I just watched this crazy video of you walking I mean, it, every step looks like it's painful. Tell, tell me about where you are now in your rehab. Well, I am, at, and I use air quotes here, at what is considered home since my injury. Because I was living in, I had a home and everything in Florida, in Pensacola, Florida, or Crestview, which is right near Pensacola, Florida, because that's where the 7th Special Forces Group was lo- uh, stationed at. So we bought a home there when I first was assigned to the Seven Special Forces Group and built up, a, you know, resided there for a couple years while I was deploying and loved it. You know, I never owned a home before and I was just building things on it. And it was, was a beautiful, you know, and I had it was so hard because I had to basically sell all of that because it was killing us financially because my wife moved me to we're, we're both from Long Beach, California. That's where we met and I joined the military from. And so she, when I was in a coma, made the decision to move me to Palo Alto because I was the nearest rehab hospital nearest in the relationship to where she was staying at while I was deployed with family in Long Beach and then brought me there where I emerged from my coma. That's the word they use, the technical term for awake, right? emerged came out of my coma at Palo Alto and then I maxed out my rehab there and was moved down to Southern California, which is closer to Long Beach to uh, Costa Colina rehab center where I was at for a number of years where I met John when I was there. He wasn't, that's not where I met him, but that's where I was at in my rehab when I met him. And then Joe, if I could jump in, because I think that's an important part of your journey right there. Randy, when Joe and I met, he was at a place called the Brain Treatment Center, and he was essentially a complete hemiplegic. He was he was completely paralyzed on one side of his body. So when I met Joe, uh, you know, seventh special forces guy, I'm a SEAL. I'm going through some some stuff at Brain Treatment Center at the same time, and I meet Joe. He's completely paralyzed on one side, and then what took place then was. Pretty freaking groundbreaking. Joe, why, why don't you uh, hit hit that piece? Because I think that's really where the, the beauty of your rehab got started, oh, yeah. you know? Oh, definitely. So, yeah, like John said, to reiterate what he said, I was completely hem- hemiplegic, as it's called, on my left side. Very similar to somebody that suffers a stroke. And, you know, I was at the rehab center there at, uh, at Casa Kalina and met up with John and got blessed with the folks at brain treatment center to get treatment and they got their whole EEG and the whole protocol. And after my first 
treatment, I was able to activate and kick my left quad, left leg. Wow. And there's video of it that John has somewhere archived. And it's just a beautiful thing. And I love to tie this story into it that one of my PTs that I was being treated by at Casa Colina told me, he's like, Joe, what they are doing for you there at the Brain Treatment Center, because it's pretty technologically advanced stuff and hard to explain, magnets and all kinds of things like that, computers. And he's like, what they're doing, if you think of your body like an automobile, a car, and its battery is dead, you jump start it, and then it's our job, him as a PT, a, a DPT, d- doctor of physical therapy, to take me out on the road and drive me. And I love that analogy because it really helps simplify a very complex process. Yeah, the stuff they're doing there is pretty incredible, Randy, and it might be a a topic for another show. But that was that was really what got Joe's kind of call it that neuromuscular pathway on his left side, getting it all turned back on. And he had had so much atrophy. And that's where that's where the katsu piece uh, came in. Right, Joe? Yes. Hey, hey, John, so you, you meet a guy like Joe, and I, yes. I know you've been through your own things, but you you see this guy and, and his readiness to get better and to get, to get back into it. What does that do? I mean, how inspiring is that? It's, cr- it's, it's crazy. You know, I, I, I think of a lot of my teammates, a lot of my buddies and uh, colleagues and, and just guys that are struggling – uh, you know, with a wide variety of, sure. of, of things, it could be everything from, you know, being stuck in that hyper vigilant state, you know, fight, fight or flight and not getting sleep. It could be uh, PTSD. It could just it, it could be physical wounds, but it can be a lot of mental wounds. And everybody, I, I would argue that everybody that's been serving since 9-11, uh, especially in that demographic, they, they, they're dealing with uh, a lot of uh, post-traumatic issues, right? You know, sure. a lot of exposure to blast injuries, a lot of cumulative subconcussive issues, uh, uh, um, a lot of concussion type injuries. And you put on top of that, the fact that guys were having to deploy and redeploy over and over with a very short recovery period between these deployments. And there's just a lot of guys, a lot of guys struggling, right? And you see it in our, and our suicide uh, right. uh, rate that you hear about all the time. And then you see a guy like Joe, it's like, holy, I thought I had a bad, but look at this guy. Not only does, not only is he freaking excelling, but he builds his, his, his own nonprofit United right. to Liberty. And yeah, I mean, and he builds this and I don't want to steal Joe's thunder because I think, to me, that's no, the most important part that. of this. I didn't do it myself with my brother, fellow veteran. Yep. My business partner, Steve West, we built the United Wings of Liberty. Yep, yep. So the, so the two, Steve and Joe, they, they build up this uh, service uh, uh, disabled veteran-owned small business. And when you – they do all this uh, – they have all these services, but the most important thing – they do is and i'll let joe talk to this because randy i think it gets to exactly what you're talking about well and before you you get to that joe you know i i think john's point here is that if i'm a guy that got shot in the head and was not 11 percent had a chance to live the the first thing i think of is not i'm going to start a nonprofit. (laughs) i mean that's that's incredible yeah tell us about that well that is a kind of a complicated piece, but I'll try to summarize it as best possible. So I'm at my last rehab center that taught me how to regain my ability to walk and, uh, uh, wait, um, either way. Costa Colina. No, 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 it was after Costa Colina. Mm -hmm. CNS center for neuro skills up in Bakersfield, California. Before I had to hit the low before I could find purpose again in life. I don't want to just sit there and try to tell people, you know, it was all peaches and cheery, right. you know, it was always up, right? And it wasn't until I found my Lord, and that's what changed my life and gave me a purpose. So what does your foundation do exactly? Well, we try to, it's a 
kind of a complicated thing, but I'll try to summarize it as best possible. What we plug the pieces, we're a conduit for uh, veteran resource vetted. I'll add that word onto it, veteran resources. And we use our partnerships with companies like Tatsu Global, Wave Neuro, to, uh, because these companies, I'll, you know, add something that John didn't mention on them. They provided all of this stuff for me pro bono because of my service. And that to me is just huge. And that's something I wanted to, you know, the way I could give back is promote these companies to other veterans and be like, Hey, look, these folks. So I'll give you our first mission was, and that he's part of the story of why, what got me on this mission was helping this guy that I met. He was a fellow veteran that I met in, uh, at CNS, my last rehab center before I came to what is home here in Ontario, California. And he, uh, not to get too into this guy's personal business, but he's a high suicide case or at risk for suicide. So, you know, it was just a calling on my heart that I was like, how can I help this guy? You know, and, and I opened up the, I was like, Hey, look, the VA might not they don't know how to handle this epidemic. They try to mask it with medications, which just, in my opinion, exacerbate the problem. And I was like, no, you you call me anytime you know, you're know, you on the edge or whatever, and I'll talk to you and see what we can't work this out. And like, I made myself available to the guy. So, you know, we, uh, without getting too... I mean, it's on our site and stuff, but without getting into his personal business, because he doesn't want that. And I respect that. And But he, uh, we got him down to Wave Neuro for a treatment, all pro bono, and hooked him up with, uh, we all we did, our organization did, because we're so small, was plug the pieces together of different organizations, like the Wave Neuro, who did the, was formerly known as the, you'll hear of us referred to as BTC Brain Treatment Center the company that got me my leg working and my left side activated. So we hooked him up with them and, and another nonprofit provided a hotel stay for him. Hotels for heroes. And we, so we connected those pieces and just got him down. All we did, because like I said, we're very small and we don't have much funding right now is we bought him his airline ticket. Cause he lives in Fresno, California, brought him down to Newport beach, California where he was staying at a hotel free of charge through Hotels for Heroes while he was doing his treatment through bring the new wave neuro. And it tremendously changed this guy's life. And, you know, or at least appeared to, because he was upbeat after the case, you know, and just showing that somebody does care for him, you know, and that's right. what I like to say is our mission and reconnecting with our veteran. Because my business partner, he, uh, like I said before, he's a hundred percent disabled, service connected veteran as well. And just showing, you know, and that's it's all about community. I have a little story. Not to go, I don't know if I'm going too much into this. And just no, no, I, not at all. But uh, so there was a. I'm sure your your viewers or your listeners have heard of the movie Restrepo about the. Oh yeah, there. sure. We we had those guys uh, on. The, film, the um, there's a psychologist that was embedded with them. And he uh, he comes back from that deployment, and they, they absorbed like ninety percent of the combat action during their tour of duty while they were there in northern Afghanistan. And he comes back, and they're at like a part a party in New York City, and he asks one of the guys, "Do you miss it?" He's like, "Every minute." He's hmm. like, "We have got to figure that out as a population, as a free society, if we're going to solve this PTSD epidemic." And I started thinking about that and I was like, because I went through the same thing when I came out of my coma, you asked how it felt. And I was like, all I wanted to do was get back to my unit and the guys I served with. And people were like, are you, my wife included, are you crazy? <laughs> you want that love and that, you know, where, you know, nowhere in civilian society will you find a group of people willing to sacrifice their lives for you. Right. Or another. And that's what he went off, you know. And I, you know, kind of put that idea together and I'm like, so how do we do that? And I'm like, through our nonprofit, we're showing that love and, you know, giving them purpose again and find them jobs or whatever, you know. And, and for me personally, it was that giving back, you know, and having a sense of purpose again. And that's why I was like, that's the key right there. And I've got to 
sell this to others and, you know, get them on board and build the community. And that might be the answer. I'm not sure, of course, but I'm going with it. It sounds good to me like that. <laughs> Joe, what a what a great what a great heart, man! Uh, you know, it's just it's an incredible story. I, I would encourage anybody to go to uh, your website, uh, United Wings of Liberty, U W O L dot org. Uh, check out the testimonials. That's right, and we're on Facebook and Instagram as well. But I'm not I'm not done with John Doolittle yet, though. Okay, John, <laughs> because both you guys are doing incredible work for veterans. I know. Uh, this Tampa Bay Frogman swim. Talk about that, Jack, because that's nuts. Yeah, that started back in uh, 2010. And one of our teammates, uh, Dan Knossen, uh, he uh, IED went low order during an insertion. Uh, he just was standing in the worst possible place, even though it went low order. And he lost uh, both legs uh, above the knees. And uh, so a, team, a group of us decided to swim across uh, Tampa Bay and raise a little bit of money for him and his family specifically. And uh, we were hoping to get, you know, two or $3,000. And it ended up uh, being closer to $20,000, $25,000. And we were like, wait a minute, this could be something really cool. So now jump forward this, this last year, this last, uh, well, j- just last January, even during COVID. So we had fewer swimmers, we had uh, uh, fewer support staff. And for the Navy SEAL Foundation, we raised uh, $675,000. Oh my gosh. So wow. In, in, in one little swim, you know, they have like 120 swimmers, they each have kayaks. And so each year, Randy, this thing just keeps growing. It's a, uh, it's really, uh, it's really cool. And a lot of these foundations, and I know Joe's uh, United Wings of Liberty, you know, it's, it's just getting up and, and running and really appreciate you talking about it on the show. Because these types of foundations, these types of, like he, he was just saying, like Joe was saying, it, it gives veterans that are struggling, it, it helps, gives them purpose. And anything that uh, we can do to, to help our brothers and teammates, man, it's, uh, you know, it's worthwhile. John, I remember talking to you the, the very first uh, Frogman swim, and to, to see to see where it, it started and where it is now is incredible. And it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of passion. And man, I just, I just thank you guys so much for taking the time and, and telling this great story. Uh, I guess the final piece of this, John, tell people where they can find out more about uh, Katsu. Uh, Katsu, uh, real simple. K A A T S U Kilo Alpha Alpha Tango Sierra dot com, and all of the information's on there. And uh, Joe's on there in a couple places. And we're doing everything we can to help our uh, wounded, ill, and injured uh, veteran teammates uh, get past their their struggles. So Katsu dot com. And uh, John. Joe, thank you. Thank you guys so much. I'm not worthy to be on this phone call with you guys. I mean, it's just, it's such an honor to have you on. Such a privilege to hear your stories. And thank you for taking the time. Thank you for what you're doing for other veterans. Thank you, Randy. Thanks for having us on. Thank you, Joe. We'll be right back here on the National Defense. This is the National Defense.